Thank you, Judy. And welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. Um, we're going to go ahead and start the program with a responsive prayer from Isaiah chapter 9. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Our good evening, ladies. Have Merry Christmas. Our first reading tonight is from Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat from the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. I have one more reading for you tonight. It's from Isaiah. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked." Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, And the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord 
as the waters cover the sea. We serve a loving God. When Adam and Eve sinned against God, he showed love towards them. He pointed out their sin to them. He condemned the serpent, serpent and immediately promised a savior to atone for their sin. Death and darkness entered the world with Adam and Eve's actions, but God promised to send the light of the world. I recently read about a man who commit, whose son had committed a horrible crime. The father confronted his son, and the son confessed what he had done. The man hugged his son and promised him everything would be okay. And then do you know what the father did? He called the police. He turned his son over to the authorities and told his son to tell them everything he had done. The father wept as he explained on the evening news that this was the right thing to do. He knew his son had destroyed many lives and had to pay the consequences of his actions. But his compassion and his love for his son never wavered. Tears streamed down his face as he spoke of his son and how he would be, th be with him through the whole legal process. He told of camping trips that he and his son had taken, how his son loved to go canoeing. He smiled slightly as he went on and on about the computer the two of them had built together. He talked about his son's passion for racing. He showed a side of his son that the world hadn't known. He never tried to excuse his son's actions. He expressed sympathy towards the victims and their families, and he showed remorse over his son's actions. He didn't minimize what his son had done, and he didn't try to cover it up. He ended the interview by saying, my son is now at the mercy of the court. I love my son, and I will be by his side always. Many people criticized the father for his action. How could he do that to his only child? He gave up on his kid. He's a poor example of a father. Even his wife turned on him. She left him and, ev and eventually divorced him. She said what he did to their child disgusted her. I would argue, however, that what the father did was an act of love. He had, a, had his son confess. He knew his son would have to pay for what he had done. But very importantly, he stood beside his son his love for him never waned. He let his son know that no matter what, he would never withhold his love. Now consider what God did for us. After Adam and Eve sinned against him, God asked them to confess. Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? He asked Adam. And what is this you have done to Eve? He let them know that the consequence of their sin was death. But in the next breath, God promised them a savior, someone to pay for their sin, to triumph over death. God's love never left them. The love of a father for his child is truly a beautiful thing, but it pales in comparison to the father's love for his children. After all that Adam and Eve did, after all we've done, God loves us no matter what. And he proved it. He promised his son. He promised to dispel the darkness that has descended upon the world. He promised the tangible gift of love in Christ. We'll now sing verse 1 and 3 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Um, now, as we anticipate the coming of our Savior, let's take a break. We can go fill our plates. If you want to go out through the main doors here and into the kitchen, fill your plates, and you can come back in through these doors over here. Sit and enjoy your food, and we'll pick back up in just a little bit. Okay, ladies, if you're ready, we're going to continue with the song, A Candle is Burning. It's, I know you don't know the song, but it's um, sung to the tune of Away in a Manger, okay? from John. The first is chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The second is from John chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Romans 5, verse eight, uh, 7 and 8 says, Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. My mom's favorite Bible verse was John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, than he, that he lay down his life for his friends. This verse was read at my mom's little brother's funeral. Henry Lee was 12 years old and a child of God. He and his friends loved to go rafting in the quarry near their home. One day while they were rafting, one of Henry Lee's buddies fell off the raft and he couldn't swim. Without hesitation, Henry Lee jumped into the quarry and pulled his friend to safety. For this, Henry Lee was awarded the Medal of Honor from his scout troop. His picture was on the front page of the local newspaper and everyone was so proud of him. 
A week after the ceremony, Henry Lee was rafting again in the quarry when another boy started drowning. Again, without hesitation, Henry Lee jumped in to save the boy. But this boy panicked, and kicking and fighting and resisting Henry Lee's help, pulled him under. Both boys drowned. It was such a tragedy. Henry Lee was given a hero's funeral and buried in his scouting uniform. Henry Lee was a Christian who knew God's love. And with that knowledge, he sacrificed his life for a friend. What he did was beautiful, a true act of love. Henry Lee let his light shine. Many of us have children. How many of us would offer the life of our child for the sins of someone else? Who would say, my son will sit in the electric chair instead of that person convicted of murder? Who among us would say, I'll give my daughter's life to pay for the sins of my family? Crazy, right? We can't imagine doing something like that. But God didn't just imagine it, he did it. Not just for us, but for everyone. What God did for us was beyond comprehension. He gave his one and only son for us. And think about the way he did it. He sent a baby, a poor, literally a poor infant, into the world, not a king or the child of an aristocrat. A poor little baby born in a stable next to sheep and cows and pigs. How's that for humble beginnings? And with full knowledge of what would happen to his son, he sent him. God knew his son would have a bounty on his head from the day he was born until he was crucified. He knew that child would grow into a man that would live a perfect life, but would still be tortured and murdered for our sins, who would suffer hell to overcome hell for us, and who would rise from the dead and ascend to heaven so that we could have eternal life. God knew that his son would suffer for our sake, and still he sent him, because God so loved the world. In his book, Crazy Love, Francis Chan brings up a valid point about the understanding God's love for us. He says, I don't think I'm the only person who has misunderstood God's love. Most of us, to some degree, have a difficult time understanding, believing, or accepting God's absolute and unlimited love for us. He ponders the reason we don't understand the depth of God's love and postulates that Maybe it's because we have never experienced that kind of love anywhere else. I think he's onto something there. We can't understand perfect love by looking at imperfect examples. That is why it is so important to anticipate, celebrate, and to resonate Christmas. Christmas is a celebration of God's perfect gift of love and light to each of us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we could never conceive of giving up our life or the life of our child for the transgressions of others, but we know we have sinned and deserve only death. We thank you that you love us so much that you gave your only son, Jesus, the baby in the manger, to pay for our sins and to be the sacrifice for this imperfect world. We pray that this Christmas we understand your love for us and we accept it with humility and gratitude. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to sing O Little Town of Bethlehem, verses 1 and 4.
if you've finished up that first plate of food, it's, it's time to go back and get seconds and, and get whatever you want, um, refill, try something new. Um, we're going to take a little break again, and then we'll, we'll finish up here, OK? I know everyone's enjoying visiting in that. Are we ready to continue? OK, we're going to sing um, Silent Night, Holy Night. from Isaiah, Isaiah 60, uh, verses 1 through 3 for the first reading. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. And the second reading is from Luke chapter 2, verse 13 to 18. And suddenly there was, a, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom his, he is pleased. When the angel went away from them and into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed. The shepherds were told of the Savior's birth. This indigent baby was the long-awaited savior. What incredible news. Yet the shepherds believed and told everyone they came into contact with about this miracle. Their flames were lit, 
and they spread their light. Remember from your youth the song, This Little Light of Mine? I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine all the time. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 and 24 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we possess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. I have a confession to make. Although I was a pretty good student in school, I hated science. I didn't understand it. The concepts were too vague and confusing. For instance, how is fire created? Here's what I found. Fire is the result of applying enough heat to a fuel source when, you when you've got a whole lot of oxygen around. As the atoms in the fuel heat up, they begin to vibrate until they break free of the bonds holding them together and are released as volatile gases. These gases react to the oxygen in the surrounding atmosphere. What? <laughs> I, I still have no idea what that means. But um, even though I don't understand it, let's look at it a different way. Let's use it as an analogy for Christians. So our fuel source is Jesus, the Word made flesh, the Bible. When the fuel is heated up, when we hear the Word, it vibrates. We get excited about it. It breaks free from the bonds holding it. We can't contain it within ourselves. And it is released as volatile gases. We spread the word. And it just keeps spreading and spreading like a wildfire. Except this wildfire is an awesome thing. It's filled with holy smoke. <laughs> There's a song called Pass It On. It says, it only takes a spark to get a fire going, and soon all around can warm up and it's glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread it to every, the love to everyone. You want to pass it on. And the last verse says, I wish for you, my friend, this happiness that I've found. You can depend on God. It matters not where you're bound. I'll shout it from the mountaintop. Praise God. I want the world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. And there's another song called Light One Candle. In a world full of darkness, in a world full of pain, all it takes is a sparkle, all it takes is a flame to bring joy to the sadness, to bring hope to a life like the promise of the dawn on a long winter's night. And the chorus repeats, Light one candle, light one candle, light one candle, light one flame. John chapter 8, verse 12 says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We as Christians have that light. Because of our belief in Jesus, we have that light. Darkness will not... Darkness will not um, overtake us. Death will not destroy us. We will walk in the light of our Savior. Jesus lights the way. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Can we light another's candle? Can we pass on the love of God? This is our calling. This is our purpose as Christians. This is the Christmas message. As you leave tonight, I'd like you each to take one of the little red candle holders home with you, put it somewhere where you'll see it often, and let it remind you that your candle will not be diminished when you light another's. On the contrary, it will just put more light out into the world.
Let's pray. God, our Father, like children, let us remember to let our little light shine. Help us to spread like a wildfire with the word of your love. Let the joy that fills our hearts shine in this dark world that all may see and know of Jesus, our Savior, our light. Let our flames burn fiercely until you call us home. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Normally, at the end of the program, we do a hymn sing, but we don't have that capability tonight. So I've picked out two songs that I hope you guys will enjoy singing. The first one is Go Tell It on the Mountain. Um, a very special member of our congregation couldn't be here tonight. She's um, getting ready to start chemo. But Terry loved this song. Every year she would pick it in the hymn sing. She would always want us to sing it. So let's really put some feeling into this one and sing Go Tell It on the Mountain. This last song is one of my favorites. Um, I, I listen to it all the time. In the morning, before I even get out of bed, I have it played so that it just gets you going. So put everything you got into it, okay? Let's sing Shine, Jesus, Shine.
Thank you again to all of you for attending tonight. I hope this was a meaningful service to you. Um, there are some people I'd really like to thank. A lot of people helped out with this program. Um, I'd like to thank Lisa and Donna and Nicole, our readers tonight. And I'd like to thank Brad Beal, who set this up for us. And Mike Williams um, always comes through and supplies tablecloths so that it looks very nice. I'd like to thank Chad Shoup and Kevin Kleinsmith, um, who were talking to Pastor, helping him getting it all, everything technical taken care of for us. We couldn't have had anything nearly as nice without all of them. And I want to thank my friend Lynn, who's back in Ohio, but she helped me. She brainstormed with me in creating this service for you tonight. So thank you, everyone, and have a Merry Christmas. <laughs>